In the previous video, we took a look at how to identify the null and alternative hypothesis. Now in this next video, we're going to identify which test statistic that we're going to be using and how to find the value of that test statistic. Now, the test statistic all depends on either if we're testing the claim about the population proportion or the population mean. Now for this particular problem, since it says fewer than 96% of adults have a cell phone, that means that we're testing a claim made about the population proportion. So in a reputable poll of 1,145 adults, 88% said that they have a cell phone. Find the value of the test statistic. So here, we're testing a claim made about the population proportion. So now if we go through the steps for conducting a formal hypothesis test, step one is to write the original claim in symbolic form. So our original claim was fewer than, just make sure I had that right, fewer than 96% of adults. So if we write that in symbolic form, that would mean that P is less than 0 0.96. So that's our original claim. Step two is to write out what would be true if the original claim was false. So that means that P would have to be greater than or equal to 0 0.96. Now null hypothesis, remember always contains equals. So that would be P is equal to 0 0.96. And then the alternative hypothesis, if we take a look at steps one and two, it's the one that does not include the equal to symbol. So the one that does not include the equal to symbol would be that P is less than 0 0.96. Okay, step four is the significance level. The significance level is always going to be given to you in the problem. In this particular problem, it doesn't give you the significance level, but we don't need that to find the test statistic. Step five is to determine what kind of test statistic we're going to be using. Since this has to do with the population proportion, The test statistic that we're going to be using has to do with the population proportion. And that just depends on where we go on StackCrunch. So we just have this indicates where to go in StackCrunch. We have to go to the right location. And then step six is to actually find out what the test statistic is. The test statistic and the p-value, but the p-value we'll get into a little bit later. So now let's go ahead and open up StackCrunch and we'll figure out what the value is of the test statistic, value of test statistic. <clears throat> okay, so let's go back to the original problem and we'll go ahead and open up StackCrunch. Okay, so now in StatCrunch, since this has to do with the population proportion, we go to stat, we go to proportion stats, we go to one sample, and what we have here is a summary. Okay. So now the number of successes, now it doesn't actually tell us the number of successes, it just tells us 88% of the 1,145 adults. So I have to figure out what 88% of 1,145 is. Well now, an easier way I could do that is I can go ahead and multiply 0 0.88. I'm going to put the multiplication symbol and put 1,145. So in StatCrunch, this will find out the number of successes for me. So I just multiplied 88% with the 1,145. Now the number of observations here, I have 1,145. And now what we are doing is we are performing a hypothesis test. So let's go ahead and indicate what the null hypothesis is. Notice the null hypothesis, I cannot change that symbol because it's always going to be equal to. So now our null hypothesis, null hypothesis was zero is equal, uh, P is equal to 0 0.96. And then the alternative hypothesis was P was less than 0 0.96. Let's go ahead and show our critical value here, which is also gonna be one of the methods 
when we conduct the formal hypothesis, when we go through all the steps. And we go ahead and click on Compute. And now this is my test statistic here, where it says Z stat. This is our test statistic. So now rounding to two decimal places, I have negative 13.81.